I can't tell you what a thrill it is to chat with you and uh, to talk about one of my favorite movies of the year. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good to talk to you. You as well. Uh, so you made music over the years and projects driven by music that it almost feels like you've been in a musical before, but this is your first one. Uh, what made this be the one that you signed on for? You're absolutely right. It is my first one. And I'm a big fan of movie musicals, but I actually don't like most <laughs> movie musicals, I find. Uh, but John Carney, the writer and director of this movie, Florence Son, he has a way of making movie musicals where they feel real. The, the people feel like human beings and the emotions don't feel contrived. The situations don't feel, you know, phony. Uh, and uh, I've always loved his movies. And so when this script came across my desk, I was just thrilled and dying to do it. And you weren't just in the film, you uh, also co-wrote some of the music. At what point did you know that was going to happen? At what point did you realize you weren't just going to sing the songs that John and, and Gary Clark gave you, but that you were going to help co-create them? Yeah, it's a funny story. So I, I came to Ireland to make this movie, and uh, I think it was maybe the day before we started shooting, we had this recording studio time booked. So I showed up to the recording studio, but hadn't been sent any songs. And I was like, what are we recording? Because no one sent me anything to learn or anything. And John said, well, we're going to figure out the song right now. We're going to find it. And I said, what do you mean, find it? <laughs> and, and we ended up writing a song together. John, me, and Eve, and uh, John's writing partner, Gary, the four of us spent the rest of the day creating a song. And, and that's the duet that Eve and I do. Um, the song's called Meet in the, uh, Meet in the Middle. And uh, yeah, I had no idea I was going to co-write a song. But it's that really shined a light on who John Carney is as an artist. He is a collaborator. He's all about sort of catching lightning in the bottle. And he has this incredible courage to walk into a situation and find it on the day. And, and I feel like that's a big part of why his movies feel so real and organic is because he, he's, not, he's not preconceiving everything down to the last nitpicky detail. He's really bringing his collaborators into the fold and seeing what magic happens in the moment and then figuring out how to quickly capture it. And that's what he does with his dialogue. And that's what we even did with that song. And uh, it can be a little terrifying, to be honest. It's different than how you usually do it. Uh, but it works for him. He, he's really good at that. And uh, I, I was, it was a thrill to get to be a part of it. It's amazing. And uh, a couple days ago, you tweeted out a video of yourself playing that Hoagie Carmichael song. Right. Uh, and th you said that that was the demo that you had sent to John. Um, so obviously collaborative with, with even those moments of, of what moments, you know, what song Jeff would play for Eve. Uh, and you also said that you had some other song options that you sent him. What else was on that list? Oh, um, the song, it, there was the other song that I sent him was a version, and this was actually, it wasn't my idea, but uh, was to sing Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone, the Bill Withers song, which is a brilliant song too. And I think though, it was because for the story, the Flora character had to have not heard of the song. She had to not recognize it because she, she mistakes it as, a song that Jeff has written. And uh, we just didn't believe that anybody would not know Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. So we went with the Hoagie Carmichael. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's a beautiful moment. Um, as, is, as is the moment when Jeff gives Flora both sides now to listen to. And, mm -hmm. you know, it sort of opens her eyes to what music can do and be. Um, was there music that's had that effect on you over the years that just sort of like impacted you in a way that you 
uh, that you won't forget? So much, yeah. I mean, almost every day, yeah, music plays that part in my life. Uh, this is a, a part of what this movie's about, is music can be seen as something that's sort of just more disposable, kind of a, an endless streaming thing. This is true for movies, too. But it doesn't have to be that. If, if you decide to lean into it and care about it, there's such rich reward waiting for you if you care a little bit more than just letting it be kind of uh, uh, disposable. And uh, Flora, the character that Eve plays is at the beginning of the movie, she does view music as something that's just like, oh yeah, just whatever, it's a song, whatever, who cares? And, and this teacher that I play is like, no, <laughs> there, there's something more to it than that. And I think this speaks to a larger point beyond music or movies or art. It's just life. Life can be, if you take the path of least resistance, disposable. Your life can just kind of get scrolled away. And um, if you dig into it more though, you really try to pay attention and not just do the easy thing, but meet some challenges and, you know, uh, uh, fail sometimes and then overcome that and try again. And if you, if you really dig in, there's, there's such reward. If you ask questions, you don't just take things at face value. Um, and uh, so to me, that's kind of what the movie's about. And uh, I, I love that that John wrote this story that on the one hand is just this really sweet movie you can watch, but on the other hand has has these layers that I think are are really meaningful for our moment in history. Hmm. I, I think one of those layers is also what it means to open yourself up as an artist. Hmm. And you see Jeff doing that um, uh, kind of in the middle of the film. Uh, it's a moment that I keep thinking about. Uh, you know, Jeff opens up, he plays kind of the earlier version of what Meet in the Middle becomes. Mm -hmm. And and Flora kind of tunes out. She's not really into it. Um, do you still experience moments like that of opening yourself up artistically and uh, being met with a blank stare or not, not being heard or seen? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and that can be painful. And, it, and I think that scene is sort of painful to watch. Which, and I love that John put that scene in the story. That's not a scene you usually see in movies. You usually see, if you watch like a, a rock star biopic, what you see is the rock star having an epiphany and coming up with a brilliant song and everyone loves it. And off they are to like tour stadiums. But that's not really what the creative process is. The creative process is mostly a bunch of failure and it's hard and it's not like super exciting. Um, it, it requires patience and focus and, and, and courage to sort of take that failure. Um, and uh, so I, I love that, I, I love movies that sort of describe the creative process. Like Barton Fink is another one that I really love. Sorry, that's sort of a throwback at this point, but like it's one of my favorite movies. It's all about what it means to be creative and you know try to write a story and um i really love how john constructed this story that shows the creative process and you see this early version that doesn't quite work and then you see two people sort of working on it together and then you get this this beautiful moment but only later after they've been through these iterations it's it's one of my favorite parts of the movie i'm glad you pointed it out absolutely well let's talk about working with eve because uh, she is just remarkable in this movie she's as so well. good and she yeah so good and and you guys only really share a few scenes together uh, physically uh obviously <laughs> right. a lot of your guys relationship like this comes through via zoom yeah uh how did you guys develop chemistry even though some of your scenes weren't physically shared together you know i i think it was that songwriting experience that i i just told you about that that was the first day we met we had never met before and there we were writing music together. That's a very intimate experience. And, and by the way, it, it speaks to what we were just talking about of having to sort of put yourself out there and with the possibility of failing. When you're when the four of us were sitting there, you know, for eight hours 
coming up with that song together, everyone threw out different suggestions that were then rejected. That's how it works. You say, how about this? And we're like, mm, no. And that's, that's really intimate. You make yourself very vulnerable when you do that. And so we both were doing that together the, the day we met. And, uh, and I think that bond really led to the chemistry that then you then see in, in the love story in the movie. Amazing. Um, well, you've, you've been acting since you were a kid, of course. Um, are, there, are there specific pieces of direction that you've received over the years that just have stuck with you or, or maybe that you still think about as you approach new projects? Yeah, I, there's a story that, about the first movie I ever did, actually, um, that I like to tell about Robert Redford, who uh, directed this movie, A River Runs Through It. Robert Redford, if you don't know, is a, a legendary actor and, um, and also a, a brilliant filmmaker and the founder of Sundance. Uh, so in a certain way, like, largely responsible for the existence of independent cinema in the United States. Um, really an idol of mine. And he directed uh, my first movie I was ever in when I was 10 called A River Runs Through It. And I, I always remember this one moment. We were, we were shooting a scene where I had to uh, walk into a room and hit a mark and then do some dialogue. And a mark just means, you know, they put some tape down on the ground where you have to stand. And it, when they set up the camera and they set up the lights and everything, it's all tuned to that piece of tape, that mark that you have to stand on. So if you're not standing on your mark, then everything they're trying to do with the camera and the lights, and everything is off. So I kept walking in to <laughs> the, the scene and not hitting my mark and doing my dialogue not on the mark. And uh, after two or three takes of that, the cinematographer, who by the way, won the Oscar for cinematography that year, uh, the, the cinematographer said to me like, you, you gotta hit your mark. And uh, you know, reasonably so, of course. I'm 10 years old in this picture, by the way. Uh, and, and so we go to do another take and I'm just like fixated on the mark. And Mr. Redford, I think, could kind of tell this. And he came up to me right before we, right before we went, and he kind of leans down, and he just sort of whispers to me. Um, he goes, I never hit my marks. <laughs> Which, of course, is not entirely true, but the point he was making was like, don't worry about all this other stuff. You focus on being in this moment, and because that's what an actor has to do. If you're worried about all the other accoutrement, you, you won't be present and you won't give a honest performance. And, uh, and I just loved that he was able to come and with such a brief, concise, and sort of lighthearted remark, completely take away my, my anxiety and bring me back to the, the centered place where I need, needed to be. Um, yeah, good old Bob. <laughs> that's beautiful I, I love that and obviously uh the the career that has followed has been phenomenal um you know when people uh ask me what my favorite movie is i, I either give them one of two answers because it's, it's an impossible question i usually say that thing you do is one answer hey i like that uh, or i say 500 days of summer hey. and for me that's <laughs> one of those moments like you were talking about earlier one of those movies that for me opened opened up my eyes to, to to different ways to tell stories and and what movie can do so i just before i let you go i just uh had to tell you thank you for that because it's really made a mark on me oh that means sure. a lot to me thank you because art has made marks on me before too and that's it's kind of why to do this in a way you know it's i i always like to take my mind off of the numbers you know the box office or the whatever the view count and uh, and think about those moments where I've been truly impacted by a movie or a song or a book or whatever it is and, and hope to think that maybe some of the work that I do can have that impact on other people. So I really appreciate you telling me that, thank you. Absolutely. What, what's, the, what's the movie that people most often bring up to you when if, you know, if they run into you somewhere? <laughs> um, 
when I lip synced uh, Rhythm Nation by Janet Jackson on Lip Sync Battle. That's, that's actually what they, <laughs> they bring up the most. Um, well, 500 Days of Summer is one of them, for sure. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Joseph, again, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for this film. I really did love it a lot. Thanks so much. Good talking to you. Absolutely. You as well.